work um, means that I often have to live in the future. Um, I work in the world of festivals and within that world you pick a date and based on that date you um, orientate your entire world, your entire universe, everything that comes through you is based on a manifestation that takes place during those particular dates. And um, for whatever reason, I've just come out of festival season and I have not been able to focus on this particular date because I need to be present, I need to be in the moment, I need to have a period of time where I'm actually in the here and now instead of in the next date of manifestation. And so I've come uh, bare boned with no plan whatsoever, <laughs> a wing and a prayer. Um, and a few scribbly notes that I have here. Um, one of the things I would like to do actually, I, I kind of was in bed the other night and I came across a quote and it really inspired me. Um, it's quite long, but I'm going to read it to you. It's by George Bernard Shaw. And this is it. Um, this is the true joy in life, being used for a purpose recognized by yourself as a mighty one. Being a force of nature instead of a feverish, selfish clod of ailments and grievances complaining that the world will not devote itself to making you happy. I am of the opinion that my life belongs to the whole community, and as long as I live, it is my privilege to do for it whatever I can. I want to be thoroughly used up when I die, for the harder I work, the more I live. I rejoice in life for its own sake. Life is no brief candle to me. It is a sort of, it is sort of a splendid torch which I have a hold of for the moment, and I want to make it burn as brightly as possible before handing it over to future generations. And so that brings me to my absolute truth and honesty. One is that right now the seven, eight-year-old that's been spoken about earlier, the, the one that went into the plastic bottle, <laughs> that's, she's here right now. I am eight. I am terrified of being seen, and I want to run out that door as quick as I possibly can and put an end to this right now. Like, ground, open up, swallow me, done. That's that bit. Say hello to her, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> close by. The second bit is, um, separate to that, when I drop down and actually step out of the way and really, really honor the truth that resides within my being, what I actually deeply, truly want to do within this country is be a light bearer. I want to be somebody who, in their own small way, affects some degree of change and can, in tiny, minute moments, bring positivity to this country and to this land as best I can. Um, the way in which I've chosen to do that is by organizing a festival, and its name is called The Body and Soul. Um, it's been evolving over many years, but it's uh, become its own festival in the past five years. And what I've noticed with it, and it's been enor an enormous rite of passage, a, a really intensely terrifying stepping up to the line to actually follow through on these voices inside me that push me forward into the world, even when I'm really vulnerable. And um, what I found from it is that in stepping forward, in showing up, in standing there, naked and waving to the world and going, I'd like to do this, Ugh, maybe it's crazy, what do you think? That people show up, that everybody actually wants to be part of something that generates positivity and a sense of togetherness in their lives. Um, it's been a beautifully humbling experience. It's gone from being something that has been very much something I've had to carry myself to something that's been a shared experience. It has brought people from the four corners of Ireland, from America, from England, from many different countries across Europe to come and bring their offering. That might be a poem, a song, a dance, it may be to work as a therapist, it might be to carve a beautiful statue, it may be to build one of our gorgeous stages that come from the trees that have fallen in the local um, area. And uh, I see year in, year out, and we started it at the very beginning of the recession, but what I witness year in, year out, is this growing momentum of a sense of togetherness that comes from pulling people together in the, you know, with, this, with the simple purpose of celebrating life in all of its guises. Um, we intentionally base the festival on the summer solstice, and a part of that is to pay homage to our ancestors that have stamped and shouted and screamed and sang on this land way before any of us were even imagined. Um, to honor that rite of passage that is needed in modern day culture for us to simply come together and share our stories, our experiences, 
our woes, our wounds, our love, our greatness, our weakness, um, our totality, together, collectively, and every now and then to raise our arms, you know, in celebration of this beautiful life, which is a gift and at times a curse, but overall it's something that we've been given as an opportunity to become better people, to evolve and to pass something on to the generations that come behind us for them to be proud of. Um, if there's, I was at the electric picnic this year, we run a part of, of, of that and have been part of it for 10 years, and there was a moment where I was really struggling with some of the political issues that were happening behind the scenes with the festival, and I was feeling very confused within myself in terms of my placement there and our role there and what we were really doing and what we stood for. And I um, was definitely having a, a, a personal wobble around, are we really doing anything? Is this of any use? Is there any greatness here at all? Is, it, is, is this pointless? Or, or you know, should we keep going? And I caught the tail end of Bjork. And uh, it was a phenomenal moment. It was like watching this like alchemical process, this, this, this divinity, this human divinity standing there, just conjuring up all of this energy. And she was shouting her head off on the stage with 60 women. And I would love if I could repeat it. <laughs> but what she was saying was, don't let them do it. She was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this actually, guys, you know? But it was like, don't let them do it to you. 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 And she was screaming her head off, and I was just like, Oh my God. <laughs> and at the end of it, she just like shot her arm up in the air and she was like, raise your flag. And I just, everything just went. And I walked back into the body and soul and I turned to some of the people that I work with and I said to them, you know what? We need to start, we need to start a revolution. We have to start a revolution. <laughs> and they looked at me, they're like, oh, here she goes. <laughs> And the revolution that I would like us to start is the quiet revolution. It's a revolution for us to stand our ground. It's a revolution for us to believe in our power. It's a revolution for us to become all that we possibly can be and to invite as many people as possible to gather around and give this short journey everything we possibly have. We can't do it alone. We need a lot of support in order to navigate down this path called life and I am deeply and eternally grateful to all the people that have showed up to facilitate that in our own little way within the festival that we put on within this country. And I'd like to finish with another little poem. Thank God the poems came to save me in the of this. And it's a, it's a gorgeous poem actually and it's by Rumi. I'm going to read it all and then be quiet. Be helped, it's called Zero Circle. Be helpless, dumbfounded, unable to say yes or no. Then a, then a stretcher will come from grace to gather us up. We are too dull-eyed to see that beauty. If we say we can, we're lying. If we say no, we don't see it. That no will behead us and shut tight our window onto spirit. So let us rather not be sure of anything besides ourselves. And only that, so miraculous beings come running to help. Crazed, lying in a zero circle, mute, we shall be saying finally with tremendous eloquence, lead us. When we have totally surrendered to that beauty, we shall be a mighty kindness. Good night.